Aloha Kako. Welcome to the scoping virtual open house for the Army Training Land Retention at Pohakuloa Training Area Environmental Impact Statement or EIS. We are glad you have joined us and look forward to receiving your comments and recommendations. In the process of preparing an EIS, scoping is an early stage where we engage the public for their input. This scoping event was originally planned to be an in-person open house. However, the COVID-19 pandemic has necessitated we think outside the box to ensure a safe environment for the public and our staff. This event was intentionally designed with the public safety in mind and to reduce potential exposure to COVID-19 while still providing ample opportunity for public participation. The event includes the online presentation you are watching now, which briefly explains scoping, the EIS process, the U.S. Army's proposed action, which is retention of up to approximately 23,000 acres of state-owned land at Pohakuloa Training Area, or PTA, alternatives for the proposed action, and environmental topics that are proposed to be analyzed in the EIS. PTA consists of approximately 132,000 acres and has been used by the U.S. military for more than 60 years. The majority of PTA is federally owned. However, approximately 23,000 acres of PTA is land that the Army leases from the state of Hawaii. PTA is particularly important because it is the largest contiguous live fire range and maneuver training area in Hawaii, the primary tactical training area for Hawaii-based units to meet their training requirements the only training area in Hawaii able to support larger unit collective live fire and maneuver training, and the only training area in Hawaii able to support weapon systems training at maximum capabilities. PTA is used by the Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, Army Reserve, Hawaii Army National Guard, and Hawaii Air National Guard, as well as a variety of state and local government agencies. Additionally, PTA supports multinational exercises which foster mutual cooperation and combine capabilities between the United States and its international allies, and also brings additional revenue from visiting military units to the state. The Army is proposing to retain up to approximately 23,000 acres of state-owned land at PTA for a variety of reasons. First, the U.S. government's current lease of this land expires in 2029. Without action, the state-owned land would no longer be available for military training. Second, the state-owned land is essential to military training at PTA. It provides access between the major parcels of U.S. government-owned land at PTA and includes training facilities, maneuver areas, infrastructure, and Army-owned utilities that are necessary for military training. Lastly, Military personnel trained to a high standard are better prepared to accomplish their mission and return home safely to their families and loved ones. Some examples of training facilities on the state-owned land include the photographs on the right of this poster. The top picture is of the military operation in urban train facility, which allows personnel to train in an urban setting that is similar to real-world conditions. The middle picture shows a firing point that is used for training and firing indirect fire weapons such as artillery and mortars. 95% of the PTA firing points are on state-owned land. The bottom picture shows the battle area complex, which is a live fire training area that allows military personnel to test and hone their ability to detect, identify, and engage stationary and moving targets. These are just a few examples of the numerous training facilities on the state-owned land that are essential to properly training military personnel. One or more land retention methods could be used to retain the state-owned land. Retaining the state-owned land prior to the end of the current lease is important to prevent interruption of essential military training. After retention of the state-owned land, the Army would continue to conduct the current levels and types of military training facility, utility, and infrastructure maintenance and repair activities. The Army would continue natural and cultural resources stewardship and mitigation on the state-owned land, and the Army would continue to permit and coordinate training and other activities on the state-owned land by other PTA users. The proposed action does not involve new training, construction, or resource management at PTA. Instead, it is a real estate action that would enable continued military use of the state-owned land. 
The purpose of the proposed action is to enable U.S. Army Hawaii to continue to conduct military training on the state-owned land within PTA to meet its current and future training requirements. The proposed action is needed to allow for continuation of access between major parcels of U.S. government-owned land in PTA, retain substantial Army infrastructure investments, allow for future facility and infrastructure modernization, preserve limited maneuver area, provide training in a challenging environment, and maximize use of the impact area in support of U.S. Army Hawaii coordinated training. The figure on the right of this poster shows the 23,000 acres of state-owned land in yellow and three areas of U.S. government-owned land in green. The following two posters describes three alternatives for the proposed action as well as the no-action alternative. The three alternatives present varying levels of retention of the state-owned land. This poster summarizes alternatives 1 and 2. Alternative 1 is the full retention alternative. Under this alternative, the Army would retain all the state-owned land at PTA, which is approximately 23,000 acres. The figure on the left of this poster illustrates the Alternative 1 retention area by the slash marked area. Alternative 1 would allow the Army to retain its substantial investment in facilities, utilities, and infrastructure on state-owned land, continue military training and other activities without downtime, and conduct future modernization of the facilities, utilities, and infrastructure within the state-owned land. Additionally, it would enable the Army to continue to have full access between the U.S. government-owned portions of PTA. Alternative 2 is the Modified Retention Alternative. Under this alternative, the Army would retain approximately 20,000 acres of the state-owned land at PTA. Additionally, the Army would retain all Army-owned utilities, fire breaks, fuel breaks, and fire access roads in the state-owned land not retained to enable safe operation of the U.S. government-owned land and retained state-owned land at PTA. The figure on the right of this poster illustrates the Alternative 2 modified retention area by the slash marked area. The state-owned land not retained includes land administered by the Department of Hawaiian Homelands and land rarely used for training. Alternative 2 would allow the Army to retain much of its substantial investment in facilities, utilities, and infrastructure on state-owned land, continue military training and other activities without downtime, and conduct future modernization of the facilities, utilities, and infrastructure within the retained state-owned land. Additionally, it would enable the Army to continue to have access between the U.S. government-owned portions of PTA, as well as access to the state-owned land not retained for wildfire protection and firefighting activities. Alternative 3 is the Minimum Retention and Access Alternative. This alternative would enable the Army to continue to use vital training and support facilities and associated maneuver land in the state-owned land. Maintain and repair Army-owned utilities and infrastructure in the state-owned land. Access state-owned land for wildfire protection and firefighting activities. And fire indirect fire weapons from U.S. government-owned portions of PTA northwest of the state-owned land into the impact area. Additionally, Alternative 3 would provide the Army with necessary access between the cantonment impact area and training ranges and Ke'a Muku Parcel which would enable the Army to continue military training, facility, utilities and infrastructure maintenance and repair, and natural and cultural resources stewardship and mitigation within U.S. government-owned land at PTA. The figure on the left of this poster indicates the general area and select roads and training trails that would be retained under Alternative 3. The specific area proposed to be retained under Alternative 3 will be smaller than this area and will be presented in the EIS. Under the No Action Alternative, the Army would not retain any of the state-owned land at PTA. Under this alternative, the Army would have no ability to train in or access the state-owned land, limited to no ability to train in or access the impact area and training ranges, which is only land accessible via the state-owned land. No ability to use, maintain, or repair Army-owned utilities and infrastructure in the state-owned land that serve U.S. government-owned land, which would impact use of the cantonment wildfire prevention and firefighting activities and range and emergency services communication. 
limited ammunition storage capabilities, which would impact training capabilities, and no ability to fire indirect fire weapons from U.S. government-owned portions of PTA northwest of the state-owned land into the impact area. The no-action alternative would compromise the integrity of PTA. Consequently, U.S. Army Hawaii, 25th Infantry Division, 3rd Marine Regiment, and several other military units, including the Hawaii Army National Guard and Reserves, and state and county government agencies would be unable to effectively train at PTA, which would result in a lack of military and local government agency readiness. The final poster is an overview of the 14 key environmental topics the EIS will analyze. This poster identifies most but not all of the topics that will be addressed in the EIS. The 14 key environmental topics include land use, which includes items such as land use compatibility, easements, and real property management, air quality and greenhouse gases, which covers ambient air quality standards, prevention of significant deterioration, and dust, hazardous materials, which includes hazardous materials and wastes, petroleum products, storage tanks, unexploded ordnance, and depleted uranium, geological and soil resources, which covers bedrock, seismology and other geological hazards, volcanology, soil properties, and erosion. Water resources, which include surface water, groundwater, floodplains, and the Clean Water Act. Socioeconomics, which covers items such as demographics, employment, housing, economic development, recreation, environmental justice, and protection of children. Biological resources, which includes vegetation, wildlife, and threatened and endangered species, invasive species, wetland, and wildland fires. Noise, which covers noise zones and community and wildlife impacts. Transportation and traffic, which includes roadways, traffic volume and level of congestion, and air transportation. Cultural resources, which covers historic buildings and viewsheds, archaeological resources, Native Hawaiian organizations, traditional and customary practices, hunting, gathering, and cultural beliefs, uses, and accesses. Utilities, which includes potable water, wastewater, stormwater, solid waste, electricity, and communications. Airspace, which covers controlled airspace, special use airspace, and military operations areas. Human health and safety, which includes employee and public health and safety and safety danger zones. And electromagnetic spectrum, which covers radio waves to gamma waves, radio frequency, spectrum use, radar, and satellites. In addition to this presentation, scoping materials and additional information about the proposed action and EIS are available on the EIS website. This presentation and the website include the same information that would have been presented and made available at an in-person open house. Written comments will be accepted throughout the entire scoping period via the project website, email, and regular mail, as noted on this poster. Throughout the scoping period, you can find scoping materials and information on the proposed action at the EIS website. The scoping period started September 4th and will end on October 14th, 2020. Once the scoping period has concluded, the Army will review, consider, and incorporate substantive comments into the draft EIS, which will be made available for public and agency review for at least 45 days. Substantive input on the draft EIS will be considered during the development of the final EIS, which will subsequently be made available for 30 days, at which time the Army will issue a record of decision. Thank you for taking the time to participate, and we look forward to receiving your input.